Have you ever started working on someone else's code and taken a look at it and your first thought is, I don't understand this. I'm going to rewrite it. It's not written correctly. Well, stay tuned because today we're going to talk about should you refactor someone else's code when you don't understand it? Hi, I'm Jamie, and I want to help you stay calm on your software projects, not get stuck and keep growing, and have a healthy balance between work and your life. Today, we're going to talk about the inevitable situation almost every software developer finds themselves in at one point in their career, which is coming upon some code that's difficult to understand and deciding, should I rewrite it or refactor it or stick with the patterns that are already in place? Earlier in my career, when I would stumble upon another developer's code that did something that I had maybe done already using a different pattern or a different programming language, my first thing I would jump to was the conclusion that they had done it wrong or I needed to find a way to convince management or the team to let me rewrite it or refactor it so it would be better. And as I continued my career, and I especially got into consulting about a decade ago, I've talked about that in many other videos, when I would get on to new client engagements and the, that client, that company is paying me as a consultant to do work for them, I wasn't often able to take the same risks that I did as a product developer. And so I had to think a little bit more carefully if I'm going to rewrite another developer's code, am I really willing to invest in all that means and stick my neck out there if it means that I might put myself on the hook for overtime and other difficult situations? So today we're going to talk about what are some things you might consider, and I hope that this helps you make a better decision if you are in the situation where you're trying to decide should I refactor some existing code for my preferences or maybe just leave it alone? So one of the first things that I think you should consider if you're trying to decide should I refactor this code or not based on my own preferences is how much do you think that product or feature is going to be sticking around? Is it going to be making money for a while or is this a dead project or a product that's not really generating much revenue for the company? I've been in some times in my career in a situation where I'm working on maintaining an older software project, or I've joined a company as a consultant and helped them change something that's not really making the company a lot of money anymore. And so if I find somebody else's code and I go in there and I can't really understand it right away and it seems really complicated and I think it would make it simpler to rewrite it, I have to think a little bit about is it worth me rewriting it so it's easier for me to understand if it's going to basically potentially take more time and put that company's project at risk when they're not even making that much money off of it. So that's one thing that I would encourage you to at least consider if you're thinking about refactoring based on your preferences. The second thing to consider is how long do you think it'll take you to refactor the code to match these preferences or what you want to change about it so it's easier for you to understand. Earlier in my career, sometimes I would run into code and I would go in and look at a design, something that was either in you know, the user interface or the back end, or maybe it was in you know, the, the DevOps sort of pipeline of technologies. And I would think, you know, I see what they're sort of doing here. I've done this a different way. So I think it'll just be simpler to use this other technology that I'm familiar with. But I wouldn't spend enough time really trying to understand what are they really doing? What's the full scope of everything that that code's doing so that if I decide to change it, I really know all the details, including edge cases, of what they were doing with that existing code. Once you know this, it's going to put you in a better position so that if you have to decide whether to refactor or not, you're going to be able to make that kind of cost trade-off decision. I mean, it's very common. I've seen this many times as a consultant where I'll join a team and I'll have a certain developer on that team who's really adamant about, you know, let's say most of the code was originally written in JavaScript or C Sharp and they're really excited about the Go programming language. And they might be like, you know, I want to write this code in Go or I want to refactor this large section in Go. And when you talk to that person and you kind of get to know them a little bit more, you find out they're just really excited about learning Go. It may not be actually a good fit for that project or that software task they're working on. 
And obviously, if you've watched any of my other videos, I encourage more software development teams and managers to let their people be more free and able to grow. But I think also we have to be a little bit careful, you know, myself included when I'm on a software project, that if I'm excited about learning a new technology, I don't try to kind of just shoehorn it into a solution just because it's what I'm excited about, but maybe the whole company or that project isn't really the right opportunity for me to start using it. The third thing I would really strongly encourage you to consider, if you're thinking about, should I refactor this code based on my preferences, is what is the hardest case of the code that would be affected by it? So an example of this is, you know, let me use something really simple that almost everybody runs into, which is database or data store access. So whether your application, maybe it's a mobile app or it's a machine learning algorithm or something, uh, you know, no matter what you've written it in and whatever it does, usually most code, not all, but most code has to persist something to some database or maybe it has to use an API to store something and it has to retrieve data back. And underneath the covers, that could be a database, that could be, you know, Hadoop or Cassandra or, or a key value store, it could be really anything. But Oftentimes when I'm working on a team, there will be a developer or somebody who, who starts working on it and then they look at the way, let's say, data storage is being done and they think they have a better way to do it. And maybe they do have a better way to do it, but they start making that change, they start that refactoring in a really simple area of the code, maybe a really simple retrieval operation or storage operation. When it's my opinion personally that if you're gonna actually change a pattern on a team and refactor something, the goal should be not to just do it as a one-off, but to actually make that change so that you can refactor it across the entire code base. Now, that doesn't always make sense. There's, there's always cases where sometimes it's better to have a software pattern that only applies to one component, but most of the time, at least I find, you wanna to try to keep most of your team using somewhat of the same pattern. So I had to learn this the hard way in consulting when I didn't do this, it really created a lot of problems. But what I would just recommend for you to consider is if you're thinking about refactoring some code, that's let's say that data store piece, if there's, let's say, 50 different sections in the code that all use that pattern to retrieve and store data, try to find the hardest or most complicated instance of that or you know, aspect of that in the code and make the change to it first. Really, the goal behind this is you wanna find any problems with your refactoring approach right away. I've been on some projects where an engineer on the team decides they want to make a change to a pattern and they make it in a simple spot and months go by and the team starts adopting it and they start trying it out and all of a sudden they get to an existing piece of code that's more complicated and it won't even work. And so now we've got, you know, half the code doing it one way, half the code doing it another. So I would just really encourage if you're going to do some refactoring for your preferences, try to accommodate and validate that hardest case first. The fourth thing I would consider if you're trying to decide should I refactor or should I leave it alone is are you willing to get permission for the change? Now this is a tricky one and not everybody's going to agree with this, but if you're on a software development team and you're a lone wolf and you're the only coder, maybe this won't apply. But if you're working with any other software developers, if you're gonna change a pattern, it really, I think, makes sense, even if you're the lead. Even if I've been you know, an architect or a lead across a whole group of developers, I like to get buy-in from my own coworkers and my, and my friends on my team anytime I'm gonna make a change. If I don't do this, what ends up happening is I make this change or this, or this change to some aspect of the code, I refactor it, and then later a couple things can happen. One, the original author of that code can get pissed off because they look at it like, why didn't you tell me that you were gonna rewrite my code? And it's just kind of a nice thing to do for the other person to let them know, hey, I'm thinking about making major changes to something you took the time and investment in already writing. The second thing is if you want everybody on the team to help make that change consistently across the whole code base, then you really should be getting buy-in from everybody on your team who has code that's gonna use that pattern. And I talked about in one of my other videos that I actually, 
encourage people if they can do it, if you're going to make a change or refactor to not only make it to one aspect of the code, but actually like if you're changing the data store, like I talked about before, the way you're going to access the data, do it to all the code in one go and just have it be consistent from the get go. But whether or not you do that, I just think reaching out to your team members, involving them in the process, helping them feel like, you know what? this person cares about us enough to at least run this change by us, even if they really trust you. I've been on many teams where everybody really likes my decisions, they really trust me, but I like to involve them anyway, just to help them feel comfortable that I'm not gonna just make some sweeping change and not show you that I actually care about your input to the change as well. Fifth, are you willing to teach everybody? You know, making a change to a pattern or refactoring some code just to get it working so that you can hit a deadline or maybe an estimate that, that you committed to is one thing. But helping everybody on the team make that change or adopt that pattern or handle the refactoring you're about to make as well is another. And I've been in many situations earlier in my career when I wasn't good at this, where I would write up a quick wiki topic and I would email it to everybody or I'd you know send a link on Slack or whatever chat technology we we're using and be like, you know, I'm done. I, I've sent everything out there that everybody needs to know about this change. And then, you know, a month later, all of a sudden I'm getting hit with all these requests. How do I do this? How do I do that? And maybe I'm working on something new and I don't even remember. And now I have to go back and figure that all out. So if you're thinking about refactoring some code for your preferences, I think it's really important that you think about, are you willing to spend the time to not just tell other people what that change is and how it works, but actually support them and help them work through adopting it and being comfortable with it so that they can not have to come to you every time they need to use the same pattern you're introducing. And the sixth and final thing that I think is really important that you just need to consider if you're going to change somebody else's code to suit your preferences is, are you willing to work overtime if it turns out that that change is much harder than you thought? I have underestimated the, the challenge and the complexity in refactoring some code so many times in my career, I, I couldn't even tell you at this point. But I'm, and I'm not trying to tell you not to take the courage and the opportunity to refactor code. If nobody ever refactored code, nothing would evolve and, and be modernized and, and things wouldn't continue to advance and let us do new things with the project. But I think it's really important that if you trivialize or you make it sound like a refactoring change is going to be easy, and I've made this mistake many times in my career where I'll be talking to, let's say, a project manager or a product manager or another technology team lead, and I'll be selling them on my change, and I'll be like, oh, this is going to make the code more maintainable, and everybody's going to understand it better, and we'll be able to build things faster once we make this change. You know, that may all be true, but I'm also betting on the, the fact that I know that technology well enough that I can really get that refactoring done in time. And if I don't, if this is a brand new technology to me, maybe I've, you know, watched some videos on it or used a couple open source projects that use it, but I'm not real familiar with it yet. I'm putting myself at risk and you're putting yourself at risk that once you get in there, if it turns out it's much more complicated, you may have to give the bad news to your boss or the rest of the team and, and have to tell them, hey, you know this refactoring change that I thought that would take two days? Well, now I'm realizing it's really going to take a month or two weeks or something like that. And, you know, hopefully if you're at a company that has a healthy culture, they're going to be fine with that and they're going to just help you make a decision, you know, should you continue to make the change or not. They're not going to look at it like you made a mistake because I personally think someone who goes to change some code and finds out it's more complicated is the most common thing under the sun in software development. And anybody that gets bent out of shape about that just doesn't understand this industry. But I think it's just really important that be real with yourself. You know, I'm, I'm just encouraging you from times I haven't done this well, you know, be real about, do I really know this change I'm about to make, the technology that's involved or the pattern that's involved, that I can feel confident that when I go to make that change, I'm going to find out early if it turns out that it's going to take a lot longer and I'm going to have the courage to be honest upfront and tell somebody, you know what, 
this is actually harder than I thought. So what are some situations maybe you've been in where you've had to decide, should I refactor this code because I think it'll make it easier for me to understand and move forward, or should I leave it alone and use the existing patterns? Leave me some comments below. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. You'll actually be notified every time I release new videos. You can also listen to this as a podcast, if you'd prefer, on Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or iTunes. So until next time, thanks.